Good morning, welcome to Secret London with me, Mark Munro. And in today's episode, I'm going to need your help. Fact or fiction? We're gonna do a quiz. I'm gonna give you three very famous Londoners. Two of those Londoners are totally fictional. Only one actually existed in real life. All you have to do is figure out which one of those Londoners was the real Londoner. Could the real Londoner please stand up? Please stand up. Right, first up, Baker Street. Oh yeah, and if you're thinking of scrubbing to the end, don't. Watch the whole video. It's far more fun. And why are we going to Baker Street? Well, elementary, dear viewer, elementary. And the reason why I've made my way to Baker Street is because this, number 221B, was the London residence of the world's most famous private detective, Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes was born in 1854 on the 6th of January, son of Seeger and Violet Holmes. His ancestors were country squires. He had only one brother by the name of Mycroft, who was older and, funnily enough, whom he considered of greater intelligence. While studying at Cambridge University, Holmes perfected his expertise as a consulting detective, immersing himself in forensic science and developing his skills in observation and deduction. Sherlock Holmes was in many ways the founder of the modern day private detective. Although most of his clients came from the upper classes, aristocrats and even monarchs, he did, however, work for the impoverished, such as pawnbrokers and governesses. His reasoning being, justice levels all ranks. Sherlock Holmes was happy to assist the police throughout his career and liaised with Scotland Yard on matters of national security, but would let the police take credit for his work as he saw this as his duty to the country. In 1881, Holmes moved here to this address on Baker Street number 221B, which he shared with his great friend, Dr. Watson. And it was at this address where the duo succeeded in solving the most prolific of their documented cases. Number 221B was the address of Sherlock Holmes' London residence. And you can also come here now because there's a museum dedicated to his life, the Sherlock Holmes Museum. Sherlock Holmes' success as a crime fighter has made him the most publicly portrayed figure in film and television history. One of the most recent adaptations of his successful crime fighting career was made by the BBC in the hugely successful series Sherlock, in which the lead character Sherlock himself was portrayed by the great actor Benedict Cumberbatch. Funnily enough, it wasn't actually filmed here in Baker Street. It was actually filmed here on North Gower Street, which is a mile to the east, just down the Euston Road from Baker Street. Just over there, you might recognize the cafe that Sherlock frequented in the series, Speedies. Let's go and take a look. Our next Londoner is famous for terrorizing the streets of the East End and Whitechapel in the year of 1888. Let me introduce you to London's most notorious serial killer, Jack the Ripper. In the year of 1888, between the months of August and November 5th, women, all of them prostitutes, were murdered here in the Whitechapel district of London's East End. The case is one of the most famous unsolved mysteries of English crime. The true identity of this killer has never been discovered, which no doubt has fueled interest and fascination into this gruesome historical killing spree. What made these killings particularly disturbing was the bloody and brutal manner in which they were executed. The victims, Mary Ann Nichols, Annie Chapman, Elizabeth Stride, Catherine Eddowes, and Mary Jane Kelly were all dispatched in the most barbaric way. 
disemboweling or evisceration were the techniques the Ripper employed, leading the police to believe that the killer possessed some sort of scientific or anatomical knowledge. The Ripper murders marked an important watershed in the treatment of crime by journalists. Jack the Ripper was not the first serial killer, but his case was the first to create a worldwide frenzy. The nature of these murders highlighted the impoverished lifestyle of the victims and if any good was to come out of this gruesome event in history, it was that the event drew attention to the poor living conditions in the East End. And there are still historic locations like this, the Ten Bells public house on Commercial Street. It's believed it was here that the Ripper lured two of his victims, Annie Chapman and Mary Jane Kelly out onto the streets of the East End here and brutally murdered them. Right, the next stop is Fleet Street for our final famous Londoner. And I'm sorry, things are still staying a little gruesome. If you were in search of a fine barbers in the city of London in the 18th century, you would have done no better than to come here to 186 Fleet Street. Behind me stood the shop of Sweeney Todd a master barber. It was reputed that he could shave the closest of any barber in the whole of London. Unfortunately, sometimes it was just a little bit too close. Sweeney Todd was born in the slums of the East End in the mid 18th century. He was actually christened Benjamin Barker. He was orphaned at 12 and a felon at 14 when he was sentenced to five years in Newgate prison for theft. It was here in the prison where he was taken under the wing of the prison barber and he honed his skills as a master cutthroat shaver. After being released from prison and falling into one job and out of another, Barker had finally saved up enough money to start renting a small shop here at 186 Fleet Street. It was at this juncture in his life he adopted the name Sweeney Todd. Fearing the name Benjamin Barker may reveal his criminal past and put off customers. During the shop's first two years of trading, Todd managed to build up a good reputation as a skilled barber and was renowned for his expertise with a cutthroat razor. Whilst running the barber shop, Todd struck up a relationship with a Miss Marjorie Lovett, a pie shop owner in Bell Yard, just around the corner from his shop. This is where things started to take a turn for the worse. Marjorie Lovett was thrifty and constantly complained about the high price of meat she had to purchase to fill her pies. With her charm and her sultry influence, she discreetly proposed to Todd that maybe there was another way of filling her pies with quality meat. Todd agreed to the grisly arrangements as long as he could have a share of the profits. Todd then installed a mechanical chair in his shop. Customers unlucky enough to find themselves in a dark, empty room would meet their grisly end beneath the floorboards. After cutting their throat, Todd pulled a lever which would flip them backwards through a revolving trapdoor onto the cellar floor. There was an identical chair bolted to the other side of the trapdoor which swung up to allay the suspicions of passers-by. Todd and Lovett were careful who they targeted. Sailors on shore leave were fair game. Foreign travellers. Men of no fixed abode who were estranged from their families were also up for the chop. This new supply of fresh meat for Mrs Lovett's pie shop here on Bell Yard proved an absolute hit. People couldn't get enough of her new recipe meat pies. They were juicy, plump, and very tasty. This was in fact the only pie shop in London you could get shepherd's pie, peppered with actual shepherd on top. She didn't like actors, said they always arrived overdone. She said priest was absolutely heavenly, but she stayed away from lawyer, very oily, and apparently had to be served on a doily. Sorry, just on the phone to my agent. So which one of these three Londoners existed in real life? 
If you thought that Sherlock Holmes existed in real life, well, I'm afraid he didn't. He only existed in the imagination of the Scottish author Sir Arthur Conan Doyle, who penned 56 short stories about his crime-fighting career. The short stories are considered a milestone in the field of crime-writing fiction. I've always found it a bit strange that a museum exists here that documents the life of someone who didn't exist themselves. So you can come here and look at the desk he didn't write on, sit in the chair he didn't sit in, and wear the deer stalker he never wore. Actually, it's a great museum. When you get the chance, come along for a visit. Okay, so we're left with Jack the Ripper or Sweeney Todd. Well, if you thought Sweeney Todd was a real Londoner and existed here on Fleet Street, cutting the throats of his clients in his barber shop, then I'm afraid you're wrong. Sweeney Todd is fictional. He first appeared in the Penny Dreadful serial, The String of Pearls. You've got to admit though, it's a fantastic story. The demon bub of Fleet Street has really captured the imagination of the public over the centuries. So much so that Stephen Sondheim wrote a musical about the life of Sweeney Todd. And the film of Sweeney Todd was also reimagined in 2007. Johnny Depp playing Sweeney and Helen and Bonham Carter playing Mrs. Lovett. So that leaves us with Jack the Ripper. Yep, this Londoner really did exist. However, the irony is we'll never really know his identity. Or will we? In 2019, advances in DNA technology enabled researchers to re-evaluate and look at the DNA evidence found on Catherine Eddowes Shaw here in the place she was murdered, Mitre Square. Forensic studies of the Shaw found that DNA matched that of a man called Aaron Kosminski, a 23-year-old Polish barber who worked here in the Whitechapel district of East London and was also a prime suspect for the murders at the time. Have we uncovered the identity of Jack the Ripper? Stay tuned, more hidden treasures of London coming soon.